Hey everyone, this is Kathy. Welcome back to the Salt and Light channel. I have another Kingdom Spouse message for you with a song and the message to go along with it. But the title of the message is God is about to flip the switch or God is about to flip the switch on in your house of love. So first of all, I looked up the definition of flip a switch because it is a phrase. And flip a switch means to suddenly, uh, to change suddenly or to suddenly be or do the opposite. So when I was reading that, the word that jumped out at me, of course, was suddenly and be opposite of what it was. And many of you right now, you're in separation from your kingdom spouse or maybe you're married and you guys are separated right now. You might have just broke up, had a falling out. There might have been some disagreements. Um, I'm also seeing a blended family where there was kind of like the Brady Bunch. Each of the spouses came with kids of their own from previous relationships, and there's been a falling out over uh, the children, like on each side, you know, fighting over the parents. And the Lord is about to put an end to all this. He's about to put a peace to it, and he's about to bring healing. But um, flipping a switch, we think about you just flip it on the switch in the light comes on that's that's kind of what i'm getting at but it also means god is about to suddenly change everything or it's going to be the opposite of what it is now because many of you watching this uh prophetic message and it may not be for you at this moment but i believe it is because of my prayer always is lord don't let them receive it until it's their time and their season so this will speak into their life and their situation and help heal them help them through the rough times but the song is uh, House of Love by Amy Grant and Vince Gill, and the, they are uh, husband and wife, but they recorded this song years ago when they were actually in other relationships, and they both went through divorces, but the song is called House of Love, so we'll go over that in a minute. But I want to give you a scripture, uh, Isaiah 43, 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you or drown you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Some of you have been through so much pain, suffering. You've been through hell and back in your marriage, in your, um, you may not be married yet, but you guys either got engaged or you've been dating and you know that you love this person and this is the one you want to spend the rest of your life with. But what I'm seeing right now is, you know, the, the, the triune, as they call it, or the three-part being, where spirit, soul, and body. And your spirits are connected and they're one, but your souls are not connected. Your soul is your mind, will, and emotions. It's where you make your decisions. It's where you feel things. It's where you feel anger or sadness, happiness, or grief. And both of you right now are going through a process of healing in your soul. You know, that's why uh, the 23rd Psalm says, He restores my soul. I pray that over myself many times. And this that's the way you experience your breakthrough and your healing, is you, you find scriptures that pertain in the Bible what's going on with you. And you speak that over yourself. Like if you're, you know, you're brokenhearted, you can say the Lord is... Thank you, Lord, for being near to me, because in Psalm 34, you say that you're near to the brokenhearted, and you save those who were crushed in spirit. So when I go through things or when I've been through grief in the past, I just say, Lord, thank you for restoring my soul. Thank you for restoring my, my family's soul. That encompasses so many things, and he watches over his word to perform it, not Lord, I'm just, I don't ever know if I'm ever going to get over this. I mean, we're human and we say things, but the Lord wants you to start speaking what the Word says about whatever you're dealing with. So that's what I'm seeing is the three-part being. And the other, of course, is your physical bodies, which some of you have been either sick in your bodies or you've been trying to lose weight and get more toned up because it's affected your health. And that's important too. So your spirits, who our spirits are who we really are before God, the candle that the Lord talks about in the Psalms and Proverbs, that man, spirit is a candle unto the Lord. It's lighting, it's glowing, it's flickering. And But right now, God is lining up your soul and your bodies with 
your spirit or with his spirit. So it's taken some time and it has seemed very dark because the enemy or the devil does not want you guys to be together because of the ministry and the call that is on your life. It is about kingdom assignments first, not just about being married, you know, because marriage is what, how the Lord shows his love to the church because Jesus is the bridegroom and we are the bride. So if a bunch of his children are fighting, you know, and tearing each other apart and they're separating and getting divorced, that, you know, um, that's the work of the enemy, but God is bigger, he's stronger, and he's going to bring you guys back together. And this message is for some of you, for many of you, you've already been going through your process for quite a while. You've been in a dark season, you've been in the darkness, and you've felt like you were drowning in grief and pain and debt and depression and feeling hopeless and feeling lost. Many of you feel like you've been forgotten. You feel like God's forgotten you or he's forgotten your prayers, but he sent me to tell you that he hasn't forgotten one tear you have shed. He is saving them in a bottle. He hasn't forgotten your prayers because your prayers are before him, the throne, just like it's like shafts of light, like an incense. And he's moving, but he has to do things um, the way his plan is and the way it will benefit everyone. And some of you, your kingdom spouse, either moved out of the house or you left the house or you guys broke up and you're not speaking right now. But the Lord says to, you know, like he says, give way to wrath or give way to vengeance because vengeance is his well, give way to to faith. Let faith have her perfect work. You just trust God and ask him to heal you. Because sometimes when these things happen, he allows them. So he can fo get you to focus one-on-one -on -one with him and start your own healing process. Because two whole people make a whole, not two halves. Because when you pull them apart, they're still half healed. And some of you have really been through some trauma. And it's not just in your relationship with your kingdom spouse or your boyfriend or girlfriend that you're, you know, you're engaged to. It's trauma from your childhood. It's trauma from rejection, trauma from maybe a previous marriage. I'm even seeing some people that's been sexually abused or molested. You have trauma from a parent who abandoned the family and you've had a hard time forgiving them. And sometimes you're taking that out on your spouse, the anger you have towards that, par that parent. And you're afraid they're going to leave you, so you start treating them with the anger that you've had towards your parent. So that's why God has you in separation, to basically put you in the secret place, and he's doing surgery on you. And sometimes when you go through surgery, if you've ever had any, um, you know, they have to put you under anesthesia. So you don't feel the pain of what they're doing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you know, when God took the Adam out of rib, the, excuse me, the rib out of Adam to create Eve, he put, the Bible says he put him into a deep sleep. You know, there ain't nothing like God's anesthesia. He can, he can slay you in the spirit and you'll be out on the floor. That's happened to me before. Or he can put you in a deep sleep. He's put me in deep sleeps before. When, and usually it was during a, um, very traumatic time and I needed the rest in my spirit my mind needed the rest and then God would put me to sleep so um, he just gave me that and that word is for you so right now you may feel like everything's asleep and it's dead and it's over with no God is flipping the switch and he's gonna fill your house with love again but it's gonna be his love first because human love is beautiful, but it's selfish, and it's it's conditional, you know, like, well, if you, you know, some people may not start out that way, but the flesh is selfish. We're humans. Our spirits live in a flesh body, so that's why we got to let the Spirit of God rule and not our flesh, and sometimes we put unjust expectations and pressures and demands on our kingdom spouse that we should not ever do. We need to take that to God. You know, you know, your spouse is human. They're not God. And they can pray and they can do what they can do. But if it's out of their control, don't humiliate them and beat them down or call them stupid. I can't believe you don't know that. Words can curse just like they can bless. And some of you, you've got spouses that have been yelled at all their lives, even as kids, and called names. And they were bullied at school. So your home should be a house of love, 
a house of God's love first. It should be a sanctuary, a, pl a place of rest that your spouse wants to come home to after, you know, fighting it all day at work and fighting, you know, people, customers, uh, the traffic, the, the high gas prices. And what I'm seeing is uh, some of you, um, you bring your work home and then there's some of you that are stay-at-home spouses and you save up all day what's happened with the kids and uh, what you're frustrated about and you attack them the minute they walk in the door and they've already been attacked the whole day. So, yes, you need to talk to them and you want to talk to them, but the Lord said to give them um, some time to rest and to eat and to relax and and maybe, you know, later on in the evening, you might say, honey, can I talk to you about something? And if you don't feel like it tonight, we can talk tomorrow. But it's just something that's been on my heart and it's been troubling me. Most of the time they're going to say, yeah, what do you want to talk about? But don't just um, run at them with it because in their eyes, when you do that, they want you to be their, their place. They want you to be home to them. And they see you <clears throat> acting like the world that they're fighting all day. That's why, thank you, Lord, that's why some of you, your spouses aren't coming home earlier than they used to. It's not because they're out doing anything. They love you, but they just don't want to hear it. So they'll sit in their truck and listen to the radio for a little bit longer, or they'll drive around. And some of them have even, um, I see some of them going to visit family members at the cemetery, and I see them sitting in their truck praying and crying or their vehicle. So, God wants you to make your home, your house, a house of love. But it first starts here with the, with the love of Christ in your heart. This house has to have love first by asking Jesus to come in your heart and save you and forgive your sins. And to give you a heart of flesh, like he says in Ezekiel. It's Ezekiel 36 or 7, where he says, I will take out the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. Because sometimes we carry past trauma into these beautiful kingdom marriages that the Lord's, you know, ordaining. And I've even said, Lord, I don't ever want to do that. And um, so the time that you're separated, look at it as a time that God is healing both of you and he's doing surgery on you. And pray for your kingdom spouse. Pray for them and ask the Lord to let, to do what he wants to do in them and heal them, but ask him to do the same for you. You know, Lord, make me a better wife, make me a better husband, make me a better friend. May, you know, I say, I pray that sometimes, make me a better daughter, you know, and a better mother. Or whatever it is I do, I ask the Lord to make me better than I was yesterday. So, um, your home should be, it's not perfect, but it should be a sanctuary, a place of peace, rest, well, you don't understand. I got all these kids running around and screaming. That's fine. But you should start um, praying peace over your home. Anoint your home with oil and say, Lord, when my spouse comes home, please put a spirit, put your hand on these children and calm them down and let them, you know, sit down and watch TV or, you know, be a little bit quieter for dad because we want, we want to give him, you know, a time, a space to come home and, and to feel our love not our screams. So, and that goes the same thing with you husbands. When you come home, understand that your wives, if they're stay at home, moms are all day dealing with this, or if they work and still come home, sometimes they have double the pressure on them. So help them, you know, help them do the dishes and give the kids a bath if they, if, you know, they need it so she can sit down for just a moment. And that not only will show, show kindness and respect, but she'll love you more for it. And because it's the little things. You know, God is saying it's the little things. Like the little little foxes that spoil the vine. Well, it's the little seeds of love that produce a big harvest. So again, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. That turmoil, that storm you've been going through, God is with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. or over. It's kind of like I'm seeing a wave crashing in the ocean and you're out there and if you've ever been at the beach and a wave just came out of nowhere and went, phew, knocked you down in the water, it's happened to me, knocked my glasses off, everything. It won't, he won't allow that. Of course, I love that when that happens, as long as I can swim through it. Um, they will not sweep over you when you walk through the fire. Many of you have been walking through the fire, but it's the fire of purging. It's the fire of 
cleansing is the fire of pruning and um, preparation for when he returns you guys together. So, um, so I say God's about to flip the switch. He's flipping the light on where it's been dark. And um, I even have the filter on this video on set on light so it's lighter you know because the light of God is coming into this darkness and he's speaking to it and he's about to heal your separation from your kingdom spouse because um, Isaiah 54 9 it says to me this is like the days of Noah when I I'm sorry this is like the days of Noah to me when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth so now I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. And this, there's a lot of reference to water. Well, water also represents not only its cleansing, but it represents the Holy Spirit. So in a way, it's good when the water sweeps over you because that's the Spirit of God. But, you know, back in Noah's day, he was so angry at creation that he killed them all. He, he drowned them, and that's where the Nephilim came out, you know, when the angels were having relations with human women, and they were producing these huge offspring, and there was just so much evil and wickedness and sodomy that's where Sodom and Gomorrah comes from sexual perversion I mean it just they basically I, I don't like to use the word but they stuck their finger up to God and you know they were they were rebellious and they were nasty and and God said okay you know he even repented he said I, I wish I'd have never made him because everything he does is good but the enemy got in there and perverted it as we see him doing today that's why you've got to be on your guard. You cannot just sit around and, and just pray and say, okay, God's going to take care of everything. Well, he does. But we got a part to play, too. We have to be wise, and we have to work at it daily. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. When you're working something out, it's a continued process. Um, and thank you. He said, to, he said, tell them that their spouses are not mind readers either. Some of you are getting offended and you're getting your feelings hurt because they may have forgotten something you've asked them to do. Well, they got enough on them as it is. Now, don't get me wrong. Your marriage and your, your home is important. But when they got a boss screaming at them and they've got deadlines to meet, occasionally they forget and they don't mean to. So, well, you know, that's a good time to put a dry erase board up on the wall and or on the refrigerator and say to-do list or put it in the garage or put it in his car, you know, um, and just remind him. And there's someone here, I think he forgot your birthday or your anniversary and you're really hurt. The Lord said to forgive him because there was something going on that you didn't know about. And when you release that forgiveness, he's going to really apologize to you and he's going to make it up to you and it won't happen again. So we've got to be willing to give everybody some grace and some mercy because you know what we mess up too and we need grace and mercy so the lord is saying this is like the noahs of water to me it seems like it's flooding it's killing but he said he would never cover the earth again or flood the earth now we've seen tsunamis and we've seen um heavy rains but the whole earth was never flooded and, and when you think about this noah's ark was so big that they found it up in top, the top of, um, I can't think of the mountain, the, top, the highest Mount Everest or Ararat. It was the highest mountain. It was found in Turkey. And Turkey was also where the king was that, es that extended his scepter and he married Esther, Queen Esther, to save the Jews. But they found it up in the mountain at, and its measurements were the measurements done in Hebrew. A lot of people are disputing it. But when you consider it in the Hebrew measurements, it was perfect. And the way you saw it from, I guess, Google Earth, it exactly looked like the shape of the ark. And people still disputed that that was Noah's ark. My spirit tells me it is. But the other proof that God gave them, and God always leaves proof everywhere. I mean, and he'll pull it when he needs to. God will show you. See? Take a look at this. They also found up in this mountain um, fossilized fish. How are, the, how are fish going to get up that high unless there was a flood that raised them up there? 
So God will always prove out his word. He will always prove his people out. He's still proving no out. And people are still, talk, you know, mocking him. But God, you know what? They didn't start mocking him. They didn't mock him when the floods started to happen. And it says all the, the floods of the deep or the waters from the deep, which I think would come out of like aquifers and water, you know, because there's water up in the heavens, the firmaments. And Genesis talks about how God separated that. And then there's waters on the earth and under the earth. So not only did heaven open up and flood, but the waters underneath in the entire earth was just for 40 days and 40 nights. It took that long for God to clean the sin and the demons out of here. So we should be thankful for his mercy that he's not going to do that again. And so when you see a rainbow outside after a storm, that is God's promise. He said, remember, I promised you. And that's the promise to us and to beasts. And that's the true meaning of the rainbow. So, um, suddenly to do the opposite. Uh, so, and then he says, after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will, will himself restore confirm strengthen and establish you that's first peter 5 10 and when i read he himself will restore you i heard him say i will do it because i take it personally i take it personally that you're hurting i take it personally that you're crying or that you know your children are crying over this god god takes it personally when his children are hurting or they're crying or they're suffering and he hears your cries he's heard your cries through the separation but he hasn't quite allowed it to come back together because he's dealing with pride. He's dealing with selfishness. He's dealing with some family members that are in both of y'all's ears. Yeah, 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 like mosquitoes. He's dealing with that, moving them out of the way. When you get married, a man cleaves to his wife. He leaves his father and his mother. It doesn't mean he you kick them to the curb and you act like they don't exist. But once you're married... Your wife comes second after your relationship with the Lord, and then your kids, and then your outer family. You know, things shift a little bit. And I had to, you know, do that when my son got married, and that's fine. But um, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's a matter of respect and allowing God to do what he wants to do through every person. Um, because, you know, your, pa your parents are there. They aren't going anywhere. So you've suffered a little while. Some of us have been suffering and waiting and on this kingdom spouse journey for a long time. And you feel like it's been forever. But but God is about to flip the switch. That's what he told me. To change suddenly or to do the opposite. So um, I looked up the word suddenly too. And it means quickly and unexpectedly. When God's about to do it quickly and unexpectedly. The darkness is about to flee and the and the light's coming on back in your house the house of love but it's also coming on in your heart because during this process the Lord's going to start revealing uh, things to you that you haven't seen before he's going to show you things you need to repent of or things that you need to give to him or let go of or throw away and get out of your house like statues and old letters and old records and Things that are bringing demons into your house and uh, alcohol, just all kinds of things that has been causing friction in your home. You know what it is. I'm not, I'm not pointing. I'm not judging. But if you want your marriage and you want the love and the call that God has on your marriage, you will do anything to honor the Lord and obey him because that is where life is. That's where joy is. That's where you're going to be the happiest. I promise you. So, um, let's look at the lyrics of the song. And, of course, I can't play them or I can't link them in the video because of copyright infringement. If When I did one of my first songs on a video last year, and it was um, a Celine Dion song, or I think it was, and YouTube sent me a message and said, we can't post your video because this... This is copyright infringement. So I'm going to give you the words, and it's House of Love. And it says it's Amy Grant and Vince Gill, and then I'll put the scriptures in the description of the video. So, you, so when you get a video and you like and subscribe, hit the bell icon, go into the description, and I'll have the I'll have the uh, scriptures and anything else the Lord gives me to put there. 
So, and I really like this song. Um, this was from back in 1995, uh, but it's a very cute song. Uh, and it's from the, uh, well, back then it was the CD or the uh, House of Love. And I think it's based on a movie. And I don't know the name of it, but it's got Michael Keaton and Gina. Um, I can't think of her name, Gina. There, there, it shows clips. If you go watch the video, it shows clips of the movie in it. So, um, all right. So it goes, well, I bet you any amount of money. He'll be coming back to you. Oh, I know there ain't no doubt it. Oh, I know there ain't no doubt about it. Sometimes life is funny. You think you're in your darkest hour when the lights are coming on in the house of love. It's been a dark hour for you. It's been a dark season and the lights are about to come on. So just hold on, okay? And when this light shines, it's the light of Christ. And it's like, it's almost like I see right now, it's kind of like when a house is being renovated before they move in or they're gone for vacation for a while and you've got like uh, sheets and cloths laying over the furniture and there's gar plastic on the floor for the painting that's what I see in the spirit your house has been under renovation your spiritual house but also your physical house that when you guys come back together it's not going to be the same as it was before and I even see the Lord giving many of you a new home You've been praying for a new home. You got old memories in this other one. And, I, and honestly, some of these are, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there's, they're like family homes that your grandparents lived in. And they're to be honored, but that was for them. You need something for your own. And sometimes family members were into stuff they shouldn't have been. They were into witchcraft and the occult or they, you know, the Freemasonry, they allowed things in they shouldn't have allowed. And the home has never been cleansed spiritually. And there's things attached to it. Now, you've prayed over it, but unless it's fully in your name, you're still going to be subject to that. So, I don't know what that means if you don't have the, somebody doesn't have the full title and deed. But it's almost like this home and the land is being held over your head. Like, if you don't do what we tell you, that's where some of this tension I'm feeling so God's going to give you your own house and y'all are going to start over on your own with your own thing. That's why he says, I'm doing a new thing in Isaiah 43. Shall you not know it? So you think you're in your darkest hour when the lights are coming on in the house of love. Oh, house of love. You've been up all night thinking it was over. You've been up crying all night. You've been worried. And I thank God that the God of Israel never sleeps nor slumbers, but you've, you've not been able to sleep. It's almost like you're only getting like two hours of sleep a night, and then you work all day. And that can physically make you sick. So the Lord's going to start giving you a spirit of rest, because it says in His Word, He gives His beloved sleep. I claim that because I work a lot too, and, you know, and I'm doing things for the Lord. And But, um, so anyways, you've been up all night thinking it was over. He's been out of sight, at least for the moment, or she's been out of sight. You can, you know, if it's your husband or your wife, you haven't seen him in a while, or you're in separation. But also, some of you, you feel like you, you're you not, the Lord's not there, like he's been away from you. He said, I'll never leave you, and I'll never forsake you. If we feel like um, God's far away, we either need to give our lives back to him and start serving him, or you need to repent, or you need to forgive, because there's things that can separate us from God, and unforgiveness is one of them, so y'all need to forgive each other, um, or you're just not spending enough time in the Word, or you're too busy doing worldly things, so just ask the Holy Spirit what, what it means to you, so, and when we're, when we're not where we need to be with God, we will grieve and we'll cry too, because our spirit is just hungering for Him, so, I command our souls and our bodies to line up with our spirit in Jesus' name. Because he even said in 3 John 2, I pray that you prosper first spirit, soul, then body. Not body, soul, then spirit. You know, the spirit is where God is, where Jesus is. And that's what we need to line up with. And if we do that, then our soul is going to start healing. And our flesh is going to start lining up. Because he'll put his desires and his visions and his convictions in you. He's been out of sight, at least for the moment, or she's been out of sight. But when something, and this is my favorite part of this whole song, 
is but when something this strong oh gets a hold on you the love the odds are 99 to 1 it's got a hold on him too so you may think you're the only one that's feeling this loneliness this grief i'm missing you i want to be with you they're feeling it too because you know what when you were one in the spirit when god has joined you to someone you may not even be married yet but you know he's the kingdom spouse you are feeling what they are feeling and they are feeling what you're feeling but when you're separated sometimes they're they don't have all of you the benefits of you being that close to them it's because the lord is doing the work and god's in between both of you right now trying to heal and fix some things and deliver and correct and rebuke like you know the, the Noah, waters of Noah but when something this strong oh gets a hold on you <clears throat> the odds are 99 to 1 it's got a hold on him too or her too and that's how the love and the spirit of God is once the spirit of God gets a hold of you he's not going to let go I don't care how far you run I don't care how many partners you go through you're going to eventually turn around and surrender to the Lord just like uh the prodigal son did and the sooner you do it the quicker your father's going to put the ring back on you and he's going to throw a party for you but the sooner you're going to have peace because don't think you can't be a husband don't think you can't be a wife or say well my daddy left us or he was terrible or my mom left us you're not them i don't know who that's for but the lord said to tell you you are not them you may have their dna and yes we're going to go through some breaking some family curses and generational curses but god said he's doing a new work in both of you so don't claim oh well, look oh my grandma's got a divorce no that's not that's not your portion because you broke the curse it stopped with you uh, the odds are 99 to 1 it's got a hold on him too and I also thought of how Jesus left the 99 to go after the 1 he's leaving many things to come to you and to fix your life and fix you know what you've been crying and praying about and, and me too and everybody because he's everywhere the Holy Spirit so he's he's working on a lot of people's marriages right now because God is about to use these marriages to show the love of Christ but also to help usher in the kingdom and to bring restoration to many families that are tore apart is what i'm hearing him say well i bet you any amount of money and there'll be a lot of blood financial blessings in these marriages um, because two are better than one and marriage is a sign of increase from god and if you're single don't think you're not blessed and you're not increased you are because god is your husband but he'll do more through two of you I'm, I'm single and I see him do things for me every single day and I'll say Lord you're you know you're my father and you're my husband I need I need this I need you to help me with this or show me how to do it tell me how to how to take care of this and of course he'll fix it and I'll say Lord you're the best husband I could ever have you're the best daddy you know tell him thank you because he's really good and he deserves it he'll well I bet you any amount of money he'll be coming back to you or she'll be coming back to you and this is your kingdom spouse but I also see the father running to you like the prodigal son running to you know coming up the driveway the father is running back to those of you right now that are coming back to the Lord and giving your hearts to Christ and surrendering to the call in your life um, oh I know there ain't no doubt about it sometimes life is funny you think you're in your darkest hour when the lights are coming on in the house of love God's about to flip the switch, honey. Hold on. Oh, when, when the lights are coming on the house of lows, when she hits the high. Now, when the house is dark and you're all alone inside, many of you have been sitting in the dark when you come home from work. You may have the TV on, you may not, you, but you just sit in the dark because you miss them. It's like their, their heart and spirit isn't there, but let the spirit of God fill your house this house and your physical house because you got to have that first before you can have a successful marriage or life it has to be a personal relationship you have first even when you're married you should still have your own relationship with Christ and pray for your spouse and you know serve them y'all serve each other sometimes you might want to you might not want feel like doing that but just do it anyways and don't let the sun go down on your wrath don't go to bed mad 
you know, work it out before you lay down. Because that's how Satan gets a stronghold in. And those of you that have children that are arguing and fighting in front of your children and screaming at them, you need to stop. The Lord said to stop that because you're hurting them. And you're putting seeds in of, of uh, rejection. So we just wipe all that out right now and speak peace to it in the name of Jesus. Um, if, if you need to discuss something, y'all go somewhere in private where they can't hear you or wait till they go to bed and, you know. Um, well, I bet you any amount of money he'll be coming back to you. Oh, I know there ain't no doubt about it. Sometimes life is funny. You think you're in your darkest hour when the lights are coming on in the house of love. Now when the house is dark and you're all alone inside, you've got to listen to your heart and put away your foolish pride. Pride is a big cause of division. And you know, Je Jezebel likes to ride on pride too and Leviathan and manipulation. So pride is putting yourself above everything else. Uh, and you've got to listen to your heart, put away your foolish pride. Oh, excuse me. Though the storm is breaking and thunder shakes the walls, love with a firm foundation ain't never, never going to fall. And that should be the foundation of Jesus Christ. But the love you two will have for each other will be a firm foundation for you and your children and for other couples and people around you and your sphere of influence and beyond. Because God's going to use you and your marriage to affect a lot of people. And he'll use you individually too. Um... Though the, uh, okay, well, I bet you any amount, it, it repeats the chorus, he'll be coming back to you. Oh, I know there ain't no doubt about it. Sometimes life is funny. You think you're in your darkest hour when the lights are coming on in the house of love. Though the storm is breaking and thunder shakes the wall, love with a firm foundation ain't never, never going to fall. And then it goes back to, well, I bet you any amount of money. Uh... Ooh, I know there. So yeah, play this song. It's when you get a chance, and then just follow it with the lyrics. It's a very pretty song, and they have like two different versions where she and Vince Gill are actually standing there singing into microphones, which I like both of them. And the other one is it's they're like sitting on top of a miniature house. It's really cool. So uh, be encouraged because God is about to. Himself, restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And it's going to be a new house and a new beginning. So that was uh, the word he gave me uh, to let you guys know that the darkness is about to flee and the lights are coming on in the house of love. And God's going to first illuminate and turn the light on in your heart again. And some of you have been, you're saying, Lord, I'm so hurt. I don't know if I'll ever stop hurting. Just let him bathe you in his love and let him heal you and forgive whoever hurt you. Now, maybe the person you thought was your kingdom spouse has gotten remarried. Give it to God and move forward. And spend time with your, with your heavenly father, with your heavenly husband. Because you know the Lord told me years ago, he said, Kathy, you're always married. I said, I am. He goes, yes, you're either married to me. Or he goes, you're either married to someone on earth. Or you're married to me because I'm a husband. To the widow, to the singles, you know, if you're not married, God is your, your spouse, whether you're a man or a woman. And some of you have ha have been through more than one marriage, divorce, relationship, uh, the death of a spouse. I've been through both. And he's going to, he wants to heal all that because he wants to do something really new and fresh for you. Because when God does something, you know, like when he talks in Isaiah about rebuilding the former foundations, he always, it's like you build on what you learned, but it's always better than what it was before and it's newer. I see some of you are coming back together like with your first spouse. You've been through a couple, three marriages, and it's like God is restoring you in your first marriage. It's don't curt word curse and say, oh, I remember how he was or she was, and I don't want to deal with that again, Lord. If that's his will and he's doing it, then just let go and trust him and ask him for direction. But some of you, he's got a new kingdom spouse for you, or you've already met them and you know who they are. 
but right now y'all you're not talking or you're in separation or they moved out of the house you know like I said so I just pray right now that the Spirit of God comes upon your life he heals your broken heart he restores your soul I'm claiming this word too I believe that the Lord is is you know uniting these families kids that have left home and ran away bring them back home Lord or they've left because of the division someone your son moved out because he feels like he's being pushed out by the new family and that's what's wrong with him because it was like it was you and him for a while for the longest time and then you got remarried and then all of a sudden he feels like he's he's not important anymore whoever that is for I want you to go to your son it's breaking my heart I want you to tell him how loved he is and how important he is to you and to the family. And he may be the oldest child. And you just let him know. You say, you are my firstborn baby. And you're the, you're like the leader of the siblings, you know. And you're the example. And I, and I want you around me. Because um, he may have even already been 18 or past 18. Don't, don't let him feel like he has to leave because of that. Because what I'm seeing is he wants to be there. Because... He wants to still protect you, but he also wants to be around his new siblings. And he needs this time of healing, too. So somebody, I think your son has either moved out or he's been staying a lot over to friends or he's threatened to move out. You go get him. Don't let him get out there where the enemy could attack him. Go get your boy and bring him home. So I pray that God blesses you. And if you come in uh, to agreement with this word, just write in the chat, you know, I'm in agreement. And if this message is for you, put in the comments or say, Lord, flip the switch. I'm ready. <laughs> Lord, turn on the light. I'm ready. Whatever you just come into agreement. And also, um, please be sure to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you want to see more videos and more prophetic words that the Lord gives me. Um, I've just got so many messages in my spirit. I can't get them written and done fast enough. And I'm just as excited to deliver them as you are to hear them. Because I listen to them once I upload them. Because when I'm giving it, I'm under the anointing. And I mean, I am when I'm listening. But then when I listen to it, it's like, wow, God, you're so awesome. So uh, just be blessed and know that I love you. I'm praying for you. Uh, send this video to three or four people that you know is going through a rough time in their marriage or them and their spouses broke up. Okay, thank you, Lord. I see somebody, you uh, you got engaged or someone at you either proposed or they proposed to you and the ex-girlfriend or boyfriend has reappeared and they're trying to get them back and you've really been upset about that because you feel they've been spending a lot of time with this ex and they haven't what they've been doing is setting this ex straight and saying look we had our thing back then but i'm in love with her or i'm in love with him and i don't want to be that i don't want that relationship with you anymore you know it's the, it's kind of like that saying it's it's really the devil trying to throw in a a counterfeit or a curveball you just tell them, say, look, God's got somebody for you, and I'm going to pray that he sends them to this ex. Let them know you're praying for them if, if they confront you about it. But they're jealous. They realize what they threw away. And usually that happens when you find when God sends you a kingdom spouse or an amazing person after you were rejected or thrown away. You know he says he prepares a table in front of your enemies well they're going to watch you eat they're going to have to sit you be and watch you be blessed after what they the way they treated you and threw you away you know i watch uh christy jesse she has amazing videos and i love how you know she phrases it sometimes and she said you know they're gonna to have to watch you eat and i love that but that's uh that's how god said he he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies Anybody that's ever done you wrong, dirty, dissed you, stole from you, one day they're going to have to watch you be blessed and be elevated. I've seen it in my own life more than once. So that's why it's good to just let God do what he wants to do and not get into an argument with him. But this person that's come back out of nowhere, it's, it's, it's a trick of the enemy and we just bind it. And I pray the Lord sends them right back where they came from. 
and God's going to take, he's going to, you know, pray for them. He's going to do a work in them and he's going to send them somebody, but it's not your man or it's not your woman, the one that they let go of. And, um, but he just wanted me to settle your mind that it's not what you think it is. And because, you know, it's, it's kind of like they don't want you, but they don't want anybody to have what they had. Well, what they had was back then and what they had is gone. And it was gone before he met you, so, or she met you. So, whoever that is, and you've been worrying about that, you've been crying over it, they're not going back with this person. If they did, let them go, honey, because they don't deserve you. They don't see the value in you. And those of you that are in relationships that you're being abused or you're being mistreated or disrespected and tore down in front of other people, and they've left, let them go. Look at that as God delivering you, and it's a gift. Because people treat you how they feel about you or what they think about you, whether they respect you or not. And when people show you who they are, believe them. And trust me, when you get married, you can't change them. And it'll get worse. So I'm not saying God can't change people. You keep praying for them. But if you're seeing this same pattern over and over and you're about to walk down the aisle, you better take it to the Lord. Because it's not going to get any better unless unless they have an encounter in a major like Saul on the road to Damascus. And, and I'll, <laughs> I'm, I'm decreeing that experience that anybody that you're with will have that experience if they're being mistreated or mistreating you. And if they won't change, then move them out, God, and get them on down the road. That's what I pray. So you can have some peace and some healing. Because you're a part of... It's like someone is watching this, and it could be more than one. You feel like you have to stay with them because y'all have had so much time together and water under the bridge, and you've been to events and family barbecues, and, you know, it's almost like, it. well, you know, I, I've just been with them for so long, but you're not happy. You don't have to do that. You'll be just fine on your own if you feel like the Lord's telling you, because many of you, the reason why your kingdom spouse hasn't come back or your kingdom spouse hasn't come in the picture yet is you're still holding on to something that's dead. It's kind of like the message I released last night, Get Away from the Tomb, when Jesus told the, when the angel was at the tomb, when Jesus came out of it, he was already on his way to Galilee. And the angel told Mary and Magdalene and Mary, his mom, you know, why are you looking among the tomb? He's not here. He's alive. And that's like the, looking in the dead things. There's no life in dead things and things that don't serve you. So quit trying to pull that heavy weight and drag that old relationship behind you. It's like you'll keep breaking up and getting back together. God's trying to show you something. He, if, if the Lord does it, it will stick. What God has joined together, let no man or woman tear apart. Now, that's not in the scriptures. I've never read that. I mean, there's some scriptures pertaining to it. Basically, though, when God is in the relationship and he puts y'all together, it's a spiritual bond and a, a threefold cord is not easily broken. It's you, the Lord Jesus, and your spouse. When God puts you together, you cannot be tore apart. Even if you go through separation, your hearts and spirits, the only thing that can separate y'all is death. And that's when he decides to take one of you. So, and I think even then from the other side, they're still, they're still, pouring their love on you and they're you know they're asking you know lord help help her because you know they don't forget it's just they're in the kingdom now and they're they're like angels so let that go whoever that's for and let that relationship go because they're also dragging you around the wrong people and they're trying to influence you to do wrong things just to be cool or just if you have to do that and you have to compromise to be with someone and you have to compromise your faith and they try to compromise you, you need to stay sexually pure until you're married because that's the only thing God blesses is the marriage bed and anything else is a soul tie, a spirit spouse, or you could get demons because they transfer through sex too. So if you've been doing that, just repent and say, Father, I'm sorry. I rededicate my life and my body to you purify me and cleanse me i break it i break any soul tie off of you whether it's mental emotional physical sexual monetary i break it off of you me and everybody else listening to this video 
oh, I feel it breaking. And even your mind is being released because some people have been uh, deep down, they're kind of afraid of losing you, but they really don't care. They don't value you, but they know you serve them well, but they've been even using money. Well, you can't make it without me. Yes, you can. You can do anything. Let me tell you something. God will empower you. He will bless you. I've been doing it for nine years, and I started out with nothing. So don't ever doubt yourself, and I'll be the first to tell you, you can do it. If you got the Lord, you can do it. It's just one day at a time. So be blessed, and I will see you guys in the next video. I love you, and I'm praying for you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, okay? See you soon. Bye.